Thanks to the seemingly infinite COVID-19 lockdown and quarantine, friends across the world are having to find new ways to hang out. These six friends decide to hold a seance over a Zoom call, even bringing in a medium to lead the group through the astral plane. But when nothing seems to happen, one friend mocks the spirits, awakening something dark and evil that haunts and attacks all six friends. At a crisp and short 57 minutes long, this is the Shudder original host. I'm Connor Izagari. And I'm Austin Johnson. And this is Filmgasm. Happy Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Filmgasm number 102, our first Shudder exclusive film, and probably our shortest film as well. A movie made entirely through the video conference app Zoom as a way to film during lockdown. Already, that's that's brilliant. Yeah, and you know, this is of course a film that kind of gained some popularity. Uh, I want to say in late July and August uh, through Shutter, and it's a film that you know Connor and I definitely wanted to watch and have been waiting for, and and was really good. It delivered. Uh, very short. We both felt like it could have added something, but that conciseness kind of adds to the the flair of it. Yeah, it feels. I don't want to. It's like like a novella of a movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, short films are. Uh, obviously uh, can influence greater greater ideas. And apparently Savage had kind of this as a short and then decided to, of course, make it a future-length film, and I'm glad he did. Yeah, such a cool story behind that. We'll talk about that later. Yes. Uh, I'm so glad we decided to meet up in person for this one because there's absolutely no way I was going to do this one through Zoom <laughs> since that's what we mostly use to record these yes. days. But no, not a chance in hell. <laughs> no, not this one. <laughs> oh, boy. So before we get into that, let's go into the rewind. I've got two updates for you, one for episodes 74 and 87, Alien and Aliens, and another for episode 83 and 99, Scream and Scream 2. Oh, that's perfect. I know, it just worked out like that. (laughs) So first up, Ridley Scott has announced his intentions to make a new Alien movie, but says that he's doubtful he's going to continue with the continuity established by Prometheus and Alien Covenant since uh, box office revenue and interest was pretty low. Mm Mm-hmm. And I can see this. Uh, Ridley definitely knows what he's doing when it comes to Alien, although I thought Prometheus was a little pretentious. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited to see what he does next. I think that he should maybe, you know, bring Neil Blomkamp in on this one. Oh, that's a great idea. And, uh, you know, of course, if you're a film guys and listener, Aliens a, Alien and Aliens is a movies that are dear to your heart, right? Just like us. And I find, you know, Alien to be one of the most, you know, advanced, ahead of its time movies of all time. So I do trust him. I trust Ridley. And if he if he has control, we've talked a lot about, you know, John Carpenter with Halloween. You know, if these guys have a foot in the camp and are kind of a part of the, the process, I'm, I'm in. And I actually liked Covenant. I thought it was cool. Mm-hmm. I thought Michael Fassbender did a great job. I thought it was a neat way to introduce the origins yes. of the alien. But no one else seemed to give a shit. <laughs> I, I did. And I, I know what you mean with that. And then, you know, speaking about Prometheus again, how it can feel almost... What was the word you used? Pretentious? Yeah, <laughs> it, it does. And Covenant, to me, kind of changed that. And it gives me even more hope. But yeah, it felt like that just fell off the face of the earth. Yeah, completely. And honestly, you know, I love Alien, but I really wish that James Cameron would just get out of his fucking Avatar hellhole and do something else. Yes. Because he's such a great filmmaker, but he has just been on this Avatar kick since 09. He's got five movies in development. Oh, my God. Imagine the alien movie he could make today. Yeah, exactly. If you take that decade of energy and put it into an alien movie. (laughs) Next, and this was inevitable, but it still feels good to see it happen. Nev Campbell has officially joined Scream 5. Yeah, we knew it was happening. It was just a matter of time. Yeah, she's joining returning cast members David Arquette and Courtney Cox. Mm -hmm. The gang is all here. And we're in. We're in for Scream 5. Can't wait to do it on Filmgasm. And she is very excited about what those two guys from Ready or Not are bringing to the table. And that's exciting. Yes. Because they were all very hesitant about doing this without Wes Craven. Mm -hmm. And now they're all psyched. So (laughs) that just makes me more psyched. Exactly. So we have not, we haven't really used Shudder a lot in the past. Uh, We we have it. uh, It's helped us find a few films. Off the top of my head, I think Black Christmas. Audition. And Itchy the Killer. That's kind of been it for us on Shudder. Yeah. But uh, we've never done an exclusive. So there's a lot of uh, off-the-wall horror films that Shudder has produced and can only be seen on that service. Yes. 
And a little background on Shutter, if you don't know what that is. Shutter was founded in 2015 as an invite-only beta test streaming service in the U.S., focuses on, focusing almost entirely on horror films. Mm-hmm. It expanded to the U.K., Ireland, and Canada in 2016. It's available to download wherever you download streaming apps, currently offered at $5.99 a month. Uh, it has a large variety of horror films from all over the world, from a bunch of different decades. Very interesting variety of films you would never see anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's the main thing for, you know... Uh, film fans like us, cinephiles like Connor and I is you have the Netflixes and the HBO Maxes and that have all these, you know, amazing titles that we've all heard of and are classics for a reason. But with, you know, the criterions and the shutters, you get those weirdo movies that nobody's heard of or nobody's watched. And so you get to have an opinion on it. And I adore shutter and we will be using it. Uh, and you know, for film gasms future, uh, hopefully more, but it's not really up to us because we're letting the book decide. <laughs> And, you know, if it chooses Shutter Films, uh, but Host was one that we heard so much about and handpicked it because we felt like, hey, we don't have a lot of 2020 movies. Let's go ahead and do this one. And I'm glad we did. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you brought this one to my attention, actually, because I had not heard anything about this. How did you find out about it? And what drove you to want to do it on the show? Um, so I had been texted by a couple friends, uh, Andrew Bachman and Juwan Carter. Shout out to my good buddies. They had said we should watch this through Zoom together. And I was like, I don't know about that. <laughs> but I but I do want to watch it, and I do think we should do this on the show because we don't have a lot of 2020 films. But the first time I really heard of it was Sean Fennessy of the Big Picture Podcast called it his favorite movie of 2020. And this is a guy who has access to a lot of movies, gets a lot of screeners, has seen a bunch of 2020 films. So for him to say that, I was like, oh, wow. Here's a guy who's in his 40s who does a podcast for a living and is calling a horror film the best film of the year. We should see this. It's not my favorite movie of the year that I've seen, but it's up there. And it's certainly one I would talk about um, where we're at in September of 2020. I would certainly put it up there in the top five or so. Well, we also have not gotten like, any horror films. Like, exactly. Uh, the ones we've gotten are, are I came at the beginning of the year and dump you wear and they're shit. And we got The Invisible Man, but that's been it, really, because everything else was pushed. Yes. And uh, especially, you know, Candyman just got pushed again mm-hmm. recently. I was very much looking forward to that. What a bummer. I am hearing St. Maud might be coming out on demand uh, in the next few months. So we might get that one. Yeah, I would love, love to see St. Maud. I mean, I, I watched, um, what was that one with Kevin Bacon? Uh, you should have left. Like, Yeah, it's been a lot of stuff like that. That's just kind of popcorn-y, not really, doesn't really take you anywhere. There's typical horror that, that, that we're not really on the lookout for. We're looking for the, the gritty, the different, and that's kind of what Host brings. Yeah, for sure. Host was directed and co-written by Rob Savage. And he'd done a great deal of short films and one drama called Strings Mm -hmm. before he made a host. And I see big things in his career, considering how solid this was. I think he's going to be big for Shudder, and uh, I think he'll be a name in horror for the next decade or so. Uh, Agreed. And, you know, if, say, it's, you know, 10 years from now, and we're looking back, man, remember COVID? And you you certainly are going to remember Savage's movie, Host, that used Zoom, which is what everybody's using to, to keep in contact with each other. So for sure, it's this kind of time capsule. And I love that they found a way to make a film without making a film. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) And, and, you know, using, using what we have in the times to, to entertain us. That's, that's, that's art. You know, that's making, conjuring up art with what you have. Practicality. I love it. Well, and it, it kind of, you know, becomes the film of the times in the way that they use COVID and lockdown and masks Mm -hmm. as part of the narrative. Mm -hmm. This is the first film to do that. Yes. Whereas Get Out. Yeah. Spoke a lot about 2017 and where we were at as a society. Yeah. Host kind of does too. Tells it us does. about where we're at as a society and what we're willing to do to kind of just hang out and talk. Yeah. I mean, these these guys are so desperate for, you know, to relieve their boredom, they summon a fucking demon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jack. I can say I've honestly never been that bored. No. And <laughs> I, I, no, I'm not going to say I've, I've sat through like a proper seance, but I've definitely, you know, dipped my toe into some stuff mainly because I lived, you know, in Romania doing mission work. And that stuff is very fascinating to me, whether it be, you know, evil or good or God or the devil, like those things are really interesting to me. That's obviously a part of my horror, you know, uh, fandom and my admiration for the genre, because I do think, and I think we're in the same boat. If you believe something, that shit can come true. Yeah. And so in host, all these things I believe could happen. That's just how I, that's how I operate. That's how my brain works. I'm not saying that it could happen the exact same way as this movie, but I do think that we have a lot of power for like the energy around us. 
Yeah. I think that there's very few things stronger than the power of belief. Yes. I think that whatever you consider to be true is true to you and it can affect the environment. It can affect your mental state. Mm -hmm. It can affect your friend's mental state. Yes. And this movie very much plays with that. Um, yeah, I love that in film. When, well, it's one of our favorite things, right? I mean, one, to me, one of the standouts of, you know, American horror would be The Exorcist from 1973. And there's a conversation where the doctor's literally saying, if she believes this, it's true to her. Yeah. And there's nothing you as a mother can do to that. And that's so, so frightening, right? Uh, knowing, like, like you said, one of your friends or uh, a daughter, a, a son or a mother, whatever it may be going through that thing, there's nothing you can do to stop them. They have to stop it themselves. True, true. I mean, personally, I still think The Exorcist was just a really bad case of nerves. <laughs> just like that one doctor. But she believed in those nerves. She did. She <laughs> believed in those nerves. <laughs> Such stupid. This, this is one very nervous child. This <laughs> child is suffering some serious... Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk a bit about the cast. Uh, yes. Nobody really, you know, no standouts, really. All kind of relative unknowns. Expected. Haley Bishop stars as Haley, the friend who organizes the seance. Bishop had a bit part in 2019's Angel Has Fallen, mm -hmm. playing the character of main aide. So, <laughs> I saw that on IMDb. What the hell? Memorable, no. Gemma Moore plays Gemma, the skeptic who pisses off the spirits. Moore had a bit part in 2017's Wonder Woman, where she played a Queen's Guard. How about that? So they've all kind of popped up in, you know, extra work, and this is a Big break for a lot of them. Yes. Emma Louise Webb plays Emma. She played the role of Geraldine in an episode of Netflix's The Crown. Mm -hmm. Radina Drandova plays Radina. Apart from some shorts, this is her first feature-length role. Caroline Ward plays Caroline, also her first feature-length role, apart from some shorts. Salen Baxter plays Salen, the medium. She appeared in an episode of Doctor Who and also played the older witch in 2015's Macbeth. Oof. So she's probably got the most experience out of anybody here. Salen. Probably my favorite character in the movie. She's such a, like, exactly what you'd picture at the Lavender Festival. Yes. Kind of, you know, psychic medium. I just love that moment when she's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you idiots. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, so good. <laughs> and then we have Edward Linder, who plays Teddy. Mm -hmm. Linder did some stunt work for an episode of Vikings. And also appeared in the films Golden Years and The Rebels. Makes sense. He looks like a Viking. He does kind of have that, like, beefy... Yeah, I, I, I would have thought he'd been somewhere in, like, the Game of Thrones world. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I guess that was, you know, too highbrow, so we got Vikings. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I guess in the end, who's going to have the better legacy? <laughs> oh, who knows, right? Yeah, 20 years from now. Shit. <laughs> well, just take a moment. So, Game of Thrones... <laughs> The finale was so bad, it has completely wiped its pop culture significance off the face of the earth. It certainly feels that way. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, we remember some moments of the show prior to that last season that were, you know, golden. 10 out of 10 type stuff uh, for, for a TV show. But when you are a TV show and you are, you know, trying to pull off 60, 80, however many episodes you're trying to do, and Game of Thrones just kind of like threw away the last eight? Yeah. That's not, that's not cool or fair. And other shows don't do that. No. So when you hold a show like Breaking Bad or The Sopranos in that regard, that's because they finish strongly. I mean, Breaking Bad might have the best finish ever, you know, so it it doesn't just start strong or, you know, the middle strong. It's the whole way. And Game of Thrones is not that way. So I don't hold it to the same regard. Game of Thrones was like the biggest show on the planet. Yeah. The expectations for eight were super high. Mm -hmm. And just the more we got into it, the the more it became obvious that the two guys behind this were just trying to throw this away and just get rid of it because they were done. That's what it felt like. Yeah. And now here we are with this kind of meaningless ride. That w which sucks, right? Yeah. Because you're like, man, since 2011, you guys were making great television. Yeah. And like you said, it became this for even an HBO show, a premium, pristine television network that you have to pay for. It still was so popular because it's that it was that good. Rewatchability out the window because now you know where it's going. Well, yeah, exactly right. You know, you want to enjoy the journey, but if the ending is that bad, you're like, I, I think I'm good. <sighs> that sucks, man. Because I would love to rewatch, you know, Blackwater and some of those episodes. But I know. I don't feel that way like I do about Breaking Bad or Twin Peaks because I like the actual whole product. Yeah. So it's just different. <sighs> well, we could talk about that <laughs> shit forever. Yeah. Before we dive into the story, I thought it'd be interesting if we all learned just how a seance is performed. Yes. The do's and don'ts and the what have you's. 
And I found an article from learnreligions.com titled appropriately, How to Hold a Seance. Perfect. So let's read into this. (laughs) The picture. (laughs) (laughs) How to hold a seance. (laughs) Number one, plan your guest list. Figure out how many people you're going to have. Make sure the space you're using will allow them all. If your living room only seats eight people comfortably, don't invite 15. And that's just good advice for any dinner party. <laughs> Especially during COVID. Yeah. Be sure that everyone attending is open-minded to the spirit world. That one's important. Because if you have somebody who's just going to shit on this, you're going to have a bad night. <laughs> and, 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 you know, this, this is one of my favorite parts of this film, is that you do have a couple characters that are fucking around right from the get-go and making fun of Astro Plane and drinking whenever that happens, which is really funny. I did love that. <laughs> but, but at the same time, you're like, y'all are fucked. <laughs> and and it sets up this this wonderful you know kind of energy between them because you're you know some of them don't have the right energy oh yeah <laughs> so you you can feel it right away and then you kind of put yourself into it you're like i would be telling them to shut the fuck up <laughs> like, they're like Gemma, shut up <laughs> well i would know my friends and i would know who to invite to this kind of thing uh, yes and I, I i don't even if i'm just going out to drink with some buddies i pay attention to who i'm inviting yeah just for going out for beers but I've also tried very hard to have, like, to not have the friend that is, like, not a friend. The friend I have to keep right? an eye on. Why would you want them there at all? Yeah. yeah. Having friends is not a stressful idea. Like, you shouldn't need exactly. that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, if you're going to, hey, hey, guys, we're going to go trip acid. You're not going to invite someone you don't like. Yeah. Because <laughs> you want to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and with a seance, it's so much more serious because you're trying to connect with, with, with beings that might be dead. So, yeah. So, yeah, immediately plan your guest list. Yeah, for sure. People who are adamantly non-believers bring a certain amount of negative energy, and this can be disruptive. Yes. You may also find that it adversely affects your communication with the spirits. On the other hand, someone who swears that seances are just a bunch of trickery and mumbo jumbo may find themselves surprised by the experience. So you, you want to kind of separate the friends who don't give a shit from the friends who are curious. Skeptical. Yeah. Yeah. Skeptical, but but open. Yeah. And, and this movie does so well with each character kind of has their way of like their angle. And you can very much tell that, you know, Caroline is curious, but freaked out. Yeah. And that's a good place to be because you're going to experience something, but then her friend ruins it for her. In terms of like, to put it in X-Files perspectives for you fans out there, you want to have a bunch of molders and you really don't want any scullies in this situation. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, number two, create a spirit friendly atmosphere. Most people like to conduct a seance at a round or oval table. But if neither is available, don't worry. (laughs) Drape the table with fabric or sheets. Some people prefer light colors to attract friendly spirits. But it's a matter of personal preference. If you use incense, be sure that no one in your group is allergic to it. A lot of this is just common sense. It it really is, but, but, uh, you know, again, if you're like, you know, when you are teaching kids to do math. You have to like break it down. And that's how you have to do it with these with people. People like don't aren't respectful. Yeah. It's fucking sad. Uh, place incense somewhere away from the table rather than on the table itself. Candles are a nice addition as well. Not only do they provide some visibility, but there's a school of thought that believes spirits are attracted to heat and light sources. No, that, that's that's moths, not ghosts. Just <laughs> FYI. <laughs> Number 3. <laughs> Common sense. <laughs> They go along with one and two. Yeah. <laughs> Help everyone get comfortable by offering refreshments before you begin. This is half how to hold a seance and half how to have a dinner party. <laughs> yeah. yeah, common sense. Yeah. <laughs> Don't seat too many people. Make sure nobody's allergic. <laughs> Offer them refreshments. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> Don't have any assholes at the table. <laughs> Make sure that guests will be respectful of the spirits and of other guests. Turn off all cell phones. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh so much. Turn off all cell phones. My, my favorite is like if we, you know, you're know, you having a dinner party and you carry, like pass a basket around. All right, put your phones in the basket, everybody. We're going to have a we're going to have an experience. No ghost calls. No ghost calls tonight. If anyone needs to go to the bathroom or have a smoke, do so before you begin. Meaning also don't drink liquids a couple hours prior, so you yeah. have to pee during the seance. 
lot of a lot of effort goes into And if into you're this. like me and you're addicted to nicotine, well, just suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> but then you're going to bring that negative energy into the seance. <laughs> <laughs> so go puff a couple and then come back. Come back. Oh, my God. Set the thermostat at a comfortable temperature. Remember that spirit activity can cause some fluctuation in levels of colder heat. So make sure everything's comfortable. Once everyone is seated, you can help everyone relax by doing a short guided meditation, offering a prayer, or casting a protective circle if your tradition requires you to do so. Yeah, okay. Four, during the seance. Here we go. Although, although many people like to do this, you don't have to hold hands to raise energy. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> In fact, if a seance goes on too long, it can get downright uncomfortable. <laughs> My hands are sweaty, yeah. Can I hold hands with somebody other than John? His hands are clammy as fuck. Ugh. Whoever is acting as the leader of the seance, or the medium, mm -hmm. should ask the spirits to join the group. If there is a specific spirit you are trying to contact, ask for them by name. See, that's weird, because like, if your name is, like, you know, John Brown, there's a lot of John Browns. A lot, yeah. are, lot of them are dead. You're going to confuse the shit out of that So spirit. I think you should include a social security number. <laughs> Maybe last known address. Make sure you get the right one. Yeah, or, yeah, or uh, to, to come to a seance, you need to bring a, a proof of yeah, proof of ID other than... <laughs> Birth certificate. <laughs> Passport. <laughs> oh, my God. And then you ha yeah, then you have demons reading off, like, your driver's license number. <laughs> <laughs> Are you 29408? <laughs> no, 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 that's the other Austin Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> he was an organ donor, blue eyes, brown hair. I'm 5'8". That guy's, that guy's tall. I'm 5'8". <laughs> my god in some seances spirits are summoned by chanting this will be up to your medium to decide on uh, i don't think i'd be want to be a chanting in a chanting seance uh, i think i'm good on that well yeah just too many movies i've seen right where it becomes too dark too fast once you start chanting it's it becomes satanic it's cult like yeah <laughs> yep yeah no thank you <laughs> well it's like you know all the all the movie you know movies we love i mean just one from last year like midsommar is like chanting is used heavily in that right where everyone starts kind of wailing with the character oh fuck that i'm good i'm good on that i'm really i'm okay without that dinner party is over i will take the doggy bag and leave jesus talk about the dinner parties in midsommar holy shit no etiquette <laughs> <laughs> but they were on their phones so that's good yeah. <laughs> as long as the spirits seem willing to reply you can carry on a question and answer session with them Bear in mind that spirits respond in many different ways. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there will be a tangible reaction, a tap, a thump, a soft breeze. Other times, particularly if you have a room full of very psychically gifted people, I don't know how you would find so many and befriend them, the spirit may choose to respond through another person. This may be the medium or could be any other guest. The individual may simply get a message to pass along, which they would then share, such as, your Auntie Gertrude wants you to know she isn't in pain anymore. See that? I don't. That's where I call bullshit. Why do they use that as the name, <laughs> Auntie Gertrude? Because Auntie Gertrude sounds like somebody who died in 1935. <laughs> Truly, really, like there are no Gertrudes left. Nope. <laughs> they all died in 1935. Speaking of, did you hear that the name Karen is likely going to be eradicated by next year? Yeah. Nobody's naming their kid Karen these, anymore. Yeah, yeah. I saw a video today that was like, a Karen is no match for a Kyle. And, and, it, and it was this guy skateboarding with a shirt off and it was this like, you know, security guard for some school and he's skateboarding on the school and she's like, you need to get out of here. And he just starts screaming like back at her like, no, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just not having it. He's like, it's not, it's not your call. You're not a cop. <laughs> and it, yeah, I love that. It's no match for a Kyle. Oh my God. <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, we will. There will be no more Karens by the time we're you know, 30, 40, 50, you know. I'm okay with that. I'm That's totally fine. okay with That's that. That's fine. Now, there are some Karens that I, I don't have a problem with. Like from The Office. <laughs> I like Karen from The Office. I'm sure there's some actresses out there that we could think of. Um, Karen was kind of a bitch to Pam. She is, but I love Rashida Jones so much. Yeah. You know, I re I, I've been re-watching The Office, and I, I watched that whole bit fairly yeah. recently. Well, it's towards the beginning, so yeah. Well, there's no real reason for us to hate Karen. We just really want Jim and Pam to end up together. Yes. It's yeah. really kind of sad for her. But she does end up, you know, 
with somebody. She has a baby. So everything ends up. Yeah, well. ends up fine. And, and the scenes she is in with with you know Krasinski, are, those are good bits, and they do they what they do really well together. In my opinion, Rashida Jones fits way better with Krasinski than Ooh. than Fisher. That's just me. I'm not a huge fan of um, the Jim and Pam. Thing. Oh shit! Fire alarm. The the the, the <laughs> office. The office is great, right? Yeah. It definitely. I, you would agree that it kind of tails off towards the end. Just too many seasons, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But I uh, that specifically within the story, I think it's focused on too much. Whereas the the British version was strictly trying to make you laugh, <laughs> and didn't really focus on one storyline too much. I feel like Jim and Pam kind of took over at times. And I, I, I for me as a fan, I didn't want that. That's because the cornerstone of the American sitcom is the will they won't they, and that's not for me. Yeah. Sam and Diane, yeah. Niles and Daphne, they always did this. Oh, and still Ross and Rachel still to this day, you know, show big shows like, like power is very much about drugs, but it's also about, will they or won't they? And that's not my way of storytelling. Even one of my all time favorite shows, the X files, they did that for, uh, for years. Yeah. It's a, yeah, you're right. You're right. It is a different kind. Cause they're so weird, mm-hmm. but it's, but it is there. Yeah. It's that formula is there. Uh, yeah. I mean, again, we've talked about Thrones and I think we could talk about the office all day cause it's, got so many so many good episodes yeah. so many seasons and and you can you can talk about the kind of the storylines yeah. forever i've got a line that perfectly encapsulates this episode i'm not superstitious but i am a little stitious <laughs> anyway <laughs> so sometimes particularly if you have a group of psychically gifted individuals as guests you may get several spirits arriving all at once chattering away if you somehow like opened a hole to the afterlife and you have like basically every dead person's swirling yeah, around so you. So it's like a gate that opens for a bit and you know, they're like, Hey, come on, man. Like we got to get out of here. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All these demons just <laughs> coming out. <laughs> uh, it's like a prison break. Yeah. <laughs> the gate is open. Run. <laughs> come on guys. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> and the guy gets shut on. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back for you. <laughs> oh my God. Run. <laughs> Au revoir, Shoshana. <laughs> Jesus. So this is not cause for alarm, but, but it does take some managing because they've all got something to say. That's horrifying. Extremely. <laughs> Treat it like you would any other conversation with a large group of people. Let each spirit get their turn to deliver the message they came with and then move on to the next one. Cause ghosts are known for their patience. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my God. Also bear in mind that not all spirits are from departed humans. Deceased pets may also have a message to pass along. And now I'm just picturing the medium just going like, Arf! <laughs> Arf! Oh or, my god! Or like, uh, you know, like Brian. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine oh if you're at a seance and the fucking medium started barking at you? Look at that picture. Oh, that's creepy. This learningreligions.com is, uh, is interesting. <laughs> You may also find that you want to use some sort of divination tools during your seance. Using a pendulum, tarot cards, automatic writing, or even a Ouija board are all common ways to invite the spirits into your seance circle. And I will not fucking touch a Ouija board of all the movies I've seen. No way. My God. I'll fuck with one if I'm uh, with the right people, yeah. If I'm, if I'm uh, you know, yeah. using common sense and I'm, you know, around the right people. <laughs> I would just have to follow learn religions, yeah. <laughs> But Austin, what about unwanted entities? <laughs> Just like at any other party, sometimes a seance will bring an uninvited guest. Yes. In this case, when you have a spirit that seems malevolent or mischie- mischievous, mischievous, sorry, someone needs to let them know they're unwelcome. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be the unlucky bastard? Hey, uh... <laughs> Tells the demon to go. Hey, man. <laughs> we're not really feeling it tonight. <laughs> I'd love if you could just bounce. You are really bringing this party down, man. We we don't like your attitude. Yeah, it's like uh, on uh, Dumb and Dumber, one of my favorite bits is when they're at that that party and he, the court goes off the wine bottle and kills the owl. <laughs> oh, this party died. <laughs> oh, my God. Setting the mood. I like when he has Harry go over to talk to, to Mary and he's like, tell her I'm rich. Tell her I'm sensitive and I have a rapist wit. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, well, aren't you going to go talk to her? <laughs> no, I'm going to set up the vibe. He, he's just sitting by the bar, <laughs> sticking his ass out. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You're uh, golden. Got you a date. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be my best man, Harry. <laughs> Harry, old buddy, old pal. Oh, my God. <laughs> Great movie. Yes. So 
typically the person who's going to talk to the bad ghost is the medium who is leading the seance, who will usually say something like, quote, you are not wanted here, but we thank you for your presence. Which, now, which to me is even more of a dick way of saying, please leave. <laughs> We've enjoyed your presence, but just right now you should go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Just, you're going to passive aggressively <laughs> kick out a demon. Yeah, just tell them. <laughs> just tell I think they'd rather you be straightforward. <laughs> If I was a demon, I'd way more respect if they just said, fuck off. Because, yeah, yeah, exactly. I would immediately want to haunt the people who are like, you know, we're not really feeling you right now. <laughs> That's who I'd haunt. <laughs> if an entity arrives that seems angry or hostile and will not leave, no matter what you do, end the seance. It's possible that it's been attracted to someone in your group who may have underlying issues. So make sure your friends don't have any psychological trauma before bringing them into the seance. Truly. And, you know, I, I really do think, like, Connor, if you were hypothetically interested in doing anything like this, like, you would, you, like, you know, I know you aren't, but you, you really would have to think about me. Like, I've, I've been, I put myself in some vulnerable situations, like, spiritually. Yeah. That you'd be like, I don't know if I want to go down that path with you, buddy. And I don't think you do. I don't. So that's, <laughs> and that, that, that's, like, something I would want to know and you would want to know, right? Yes. Because we're, we have common sense. Yes, we do. <laughs> In the rules. Number five, closing the door. When you're done with the seance, it's important to guests thank the spirits for coming to visit. After all, you would do so if you had living guests drop in. Yeah. I just want to thank everyone for being here. Yeah. Tonight was so much fun. <laughs> we should do it next week. My God. <laughs> How about game night next time? <laughs> <laughs> if one of your attendees seemed to have slipped into a trance or a sleep-like state during the seance, allow them to return gradually on their own. Jesus. Do not shake them awake. <laughs> Chances are they'll have a message for someone once they're back among the group. So if you got sleeping friends and it's time to go, just they're staying the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Close the seance by telling the spirits farewell, thanking them and asking them to move along. You may want to offer a small blessing or prayer as a way of ending the formal seance, but bear in mind that some spirits like to hang around after the seance is officially finished. Fucking freeloaders. Don't know when the party's over. If they do, it's okay. They're probably just curious. And they may return to you. Uh, they, uh, they may return to visit you later in the evening during a dream sequence. So they're gonna haunt your fucking dreams. <laughs> Jesus, this is not making me feel better about doing one of these. No, no. Well, and, and just thinking about like, there's just not a lot of prospects out there of people you'd want to have in the room doing this. No, no, there's not. <laughs> Additional tips: before you begin your seance, smudge the area with sage or sweet grass for ritual cleansing. Ah. Make sure you've eliminated potential distractions, such as children <laughs> or ringing telephones. Get the love, kids at the house. I love how it says, make sure you've eliminated, eliminated <laughs> distractions. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Interestingly, many pets seem to come and go through spirit activity without causing any disruption. Cats, in particular, tend to be very curious about what's going on and have been known to make themselves right at home in the middle of spirit work. Oh my God. Yeah, that, that's comforting. Your guest may wish to bring an object that belonged to a deceased person as a way of strengthening the connection. Photographs are also good links to the dead. Mm -hmm. And that is all for how to conduct a seance. I hope we all learned something today. Yeah, and with that in mind, you know, God. that's that's what we're going to be talking about here with Host with these six characters. Host has an IMDb score of 6.6 .6 and an impossible 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's steadily gaining traction as one of the few new films of 2020 that we can all watch at home without shelling out 20 or 30 extra bucks. I'm looking at you, Mulan. Yeah, no, and, and you, <laughs> sit, you watch at home. Yeah, man, I had, a, I had a talk with Brianna about this for a long time today because you see these trailers for, you know, The Devil All the Time and Trial of the Chicago 7 and some, some Netflix stuff, the Millie Bobby Brown, uh, Enola Holmes. And you're like, hey, Mulan. Uh, aren't you the movie that we're all supposed to see because you're Disney and you're supposed to kind of like inspire us right now and you're not for free already on the app that we all have? Man, I, I don't know how to swallow that one because already I work at HEB and there's that little movie section. Already every day that I go home, I'm reminded when I see the movie section, oh, there's Fantastic Mr. Fox, a great movie for $6.99 on Blu-ray. Next to it is all the Pixar movies for $25.99. That shit really, really, really pisses me off when you're trying to be yeah, go ahead. This God. <laughs> So last year, Disney raked in a combined box office gross of $13 billion. They do not need our $30 no. for Mulan. This is a, the most greedy shit they could ever do during a pandemic when everyone's at home. No, and, and I can, 
you know, we can afford this. We're not saying like we're the poorest of poor in our country. But we shouldn't but have to. No, we shouldn't have to. And the main point is there are people in our country, there's people in certain demographics that should see the movie. Yeah. And literally can't. And that's that's kind of fucked. Because even if it were in a theater, you could hypothetically take... I could take me and my daughter for cheaper. That's fucking stupid. It's stupid, it's sick, and it's just... <sighs> Disney, man. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you have us. You have us. What do you, what do you yeah. want? Like, you have all of our money. You have everybody's attention. Y'all make great stuff with the MCU, with, you know, all your stuff, Star Wars and all the Disney movies. Just give us a goddamn bone once in a while. <laughs> you know? Like, because we do, we do it over and over. I mean, think about how much money you just spent on Marvel and Star Wars just in 2019. Yep. So you would like to get a little in return when it's just fucking Mulan. And on top of that, from what I've heard... The film makes changes. Obviously, we knew about Mushu. We knew about the music. But from what I've heard is they're making actual... They made actual changes to the character... Oh, boy. ...that she gains some sort of powers. Oh, boy. And for me, having, you know, a wonderful girlfriend and a wonderful daughter who's going to be two in February... Woo! Mulan is a movie about a woman equaling to the man without changing anything about her. She's just being badass because she is. Yeah. And using her strengths... And even though she has some weaknesses, she's using her strength to kind of you know, cover those up and, and still be a good fighter and still be this awesome person who's helping out her community, helping out her country. Yeah. And in the movie, it seems like if you're going to make that call, then she has to have magic to be this person. Get the, That's not right. Because that takes away from the, 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 you know, lesson that a young girl can learn. I can be myself and be all I want. Yeah. And that, when you take that out of Mulan, I'm just not quite sure what you have. The there. original Mulan might be the strongest female empowerment movie Disney ever made. I I, th I think so. You know, I think yeah. Mulan is really good, but I think Mulan just takes it's just on a different level of well, the way how because like, the whole Chinese culture around misogyny and mm -hmm. how you know being a woman makes you less than you know a horse in their society. So for Mulan to you know rise through the ranks of the Chinese army, save the emperor, to become you know by using her femininity as you know her main weapon, exactly, it's a big deal to a lot of women. I know, like I have some cousins who adore that movie yeah. because it showed them possibilities. Exactly. It gives you that, that yeah. oomph. That, and if this yeah. new movie is saying like, yeah, you can be awesome as a woman, but only if you have magic powers. Yeah. That's really fucked yeah, up. Like, yeah. You can do what these men are doing. If you have powers, like that's what I'm, that's, he that's what I'm hearing from, you know, Sean Fennessy, Jason Concepcion and Amanda Dobbins of the big picture. Oh boy. All, they all kind of tore that movie apart. And so when I knew that and it's $30, I was just like, I'm, I'm, I'm good. And when it comes on December 4th, I'll check it out. But I'm, or is it December 4th? I yeah. haven't. I don't know. I'm not excited. <laughs> I'm not excited. And that, that really sucks, right? Because that's, that's uh, you know, that and Tarzan are kind of on the tail end of that golden 90s run from, you know, Aladdin, Lion King, and so on and so forth all the way to there. Well, dude, and the trailer, like, it choked me up every time I saw the preview, the music. It, it felt like this was going to be the big one for Disney. Yes. Like and the, of the live action. Of their live action yes. movies. But apparently, no. I don't yeah. know if that's due to COVID or if Disney, like, fucked it up. I'm not sure. You know, uh, again, uh, we'll, we'll both check it out when we can and kind of give our, our proper thoughts and we'll get a review up on the site, but not till December because that's when it's free. Yeah, I'm not paying 30 extra bucks. No, we already have all this. We already, we, we have all the streaming services. Did, and last <laughs> year, I spent money at the movies to see Star Wars Episode Nine, Avengers Endgame, Captain Marvel, Spider-Man Far From Home, Toy Story 4, Onward, Onward earlier this year. Disney's got my money. <laughs> they don't need more. Exactly. It's all, and it's all of us. You have all of us by the balls. Yes. And we know it. We're cool with it because y'all's content's good. The MCU shit is really good. So like, you have us. Just give us a bone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we could kind of talk about that part of uh, the film industry forever, right? It's We're so in interesting. The, we are in the pit. We put the lotion on. <laughs> Stop spraying us with the goddamn hose. Ex exactly. <laughs> exactly. So with that, what'd you like about host? I love that it's free. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, and no, oh, it's not free because you pay for Shutter, right? Yeah, but it's not five ninety nine for Shutter <laughs> plus twenty bucks for for host, and, and that's it. That's that's the only thing I need to know if I'm already paying for for a streaming service. It's just great to have options on there. Yeah. Host the the first thing that I, that popped out to me right, you know, when I, I turned it on finally last night, it, it is that that fifty six minute runtime is like whoa. Yeah. I'm about to go through a sprint, <laughs> and and it is it. It jumps and goes right away, right when you get introduced to Salem, you're like, here we go. And it just doesn't really stop. No, it and doesn't. I, I love when a horror film picks up and doesn't stop until the credits roll. So right away, I do want to point out some similarities to the film Unfriended. Oh, yeah. Oh, Unfriended, Unfriended Dark Web, and yep. what's the other one? 
So this is searching, right? Yeah, this past decade, yeah. there's been, you know, it's been kind of a trend. Yeah. I saw both Unfriended films at the theaters. I liked them both. Mm -hmm. And it is this, you know, all told through, uh, computer. through the computer, yeah. through apps, through software. You know, they use Skype and they use, uh, on, you know, chat window. I don't know the lingo. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but Unfriended was a very, uh, unique film at the time it was a very yes. cool it was the first time they did something like yeah, this. 2014 yeah i remember calling it i think either me or caleb called it the blair witch of the 2010s i agree <laughs> i agree yeah it started a trend it did it did and that's what blair witch did and zoom um zoom has kind of replaced skype as the go-to for video conferencing mm -hmm. so to use that for a movie very smart because zoom i think is way better than Skype. I mean, we did a few filmgasm episodes through Skype and it was a, it was a bit of a nightmare. Yeah. Did, I, a lot of buffering, a lot of, yeah. Uh, some of the sound quality wasn't, wasn't mm -hmm. like for us, but yeah, zoom is like you said, universal and discord looks really similar to zoom. So anybody who's used that, it, it already has this feel of like, fuck, I've been on this. Yeah. And, and that's, that's great for horror. That's great when you can implement relatability to horror because then it makes it scarier. Yeah, especially since we're all we're all at home, we're all mm -hmm. talking to our friends through Zoom, so we get it. Ah, that's another thing I love about kind of the intro of it. They never like flat, out, or it takes a minute for them to flat out say what they're doing. Yeah, because they're just kind of on this Zoom call, like, "Oh, is Teddy coming tonight?" You know, and you're like, "Are they going somewhere?" Or is tonight? Is this it? <laughs> is it daytime? You know, it, it is a very organic intro. And they start talking about, you know, have you ever done anything like this? And she's like, "Yeah, I did it with a couple friends, and yeah. something happened, but you know, we're gonna see." The interesting thing is none of them, like it was never brought up who anyone's trying to contact because they all have items. Yes. They all had an individual item, yeah. but who, like what was the goal here? I feel like Haley was leading this whole thing. So I feel like she was the one and she's the only American, right? Yeah. And didn't, so at the beginning, did her call, did her closet door open by itself? I, yeah, I caught that. So her apartment was already haunted like, before the seance started, well, which makes sense. Cause she, yeah, she had said she's done a couple of them and said, she didn't, like you said, she didn't say exactly what, but she was like, we experienced something. Yeah. And you, you already are kind of like, mm, well, what does that mean? And what do you carry with you? You know? And Gemma, who clearly has this weird energy about her, can read that shit and it makes her scared and it causes her to kind of self self defend. Yeah. And that's why she starts fucking around and being kind of annoying and negative. You get this vibe though, of like a past beef. Exactly. Between Haley and Gemma. Exactly. But we never find out what that is. There's I so love much. That. I love that. It's so established already. Mm -hmm. It's like the movie's going to happen with or without us. Uh, Redina says, oh, are we going to do this again? You know? Yeah. Because they're like, yeah, they're arguing over the Zoom call. They're like, can we just have one Zoom call where we like <laughs> are hanging out? Clearly they have an issue. And yeah, Gemma, Jim, Gemma's, I, I would, I would have told her to fuck off too. Yeah. When Teddy's new girlfriend's kind of a bitch. Jenny? Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah, so I, I guess we can introduce the players as far as where they're all at. So it seems like Haley's at home. Yeah. Jim is at home. Emma's at home. Caroline's at home. And then Teddy is... Does he say where he is? He's on some sort of vacation? Yeah, he's at his girlfriend's vacation home. Okay, okay. And then uh, Radina's with her boyfriend. That's right, at the flat. He, who yeah. she hasn't known very long and moved in together for quarantine. And they are yeah, having yeah. some some friction. Clearly, yeah. At one point, he's like cutting onions. I love that when he's like, bump, bump, bump. <laughs> and she just goes over and talks to them and they're all like, oh, here we go again. Every time we argue, he goes to the bedroom. So I have all this space. Oh, that geez. was that was weird. <laughs> like, like if I were Arlen, I'd be like, I'm breaking up with you. <laughs> you like rather me not be in the room? All right, cool. <laughs> Shit. So they bring in um, Salen, this medium. Who looks, so she'd be yeah. the seventh, you know, cast member. And she looks exactly like you think she'd look. And Teddy wants to play a drinking game where every time she says the words astral plane, they take a shot. Yes. And she says it like three times. And right away. It makes me laugh because they all just are like, eh, and they <laughs> quietly it. take a shot. <laughs> and, then, and then quickly, quickly into this, you know, Salem is saying we don't want anything, you know, no negative, you no, know, be respectful. And he, Jenny comes to Teddy's phone and is like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then, and then it just falls. And then, like they're done. Teddy's out. We don't see him for another 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Yeah, till the end of the movie, really. Exactly. So he's out, and now they're all kind of like, ah, Teddy, really? And Salem's like, hold on, no, no, no. Like, it might be better off without him if he wasn't, you know, going to be here. Let's not just let this distract us from what we can do. But really, the worst person was still there. Oh, yeah. So they they light their candles, they have their items, mm -hmm. and Salem tells them, you know, imagine a, a circle with all of us. Imagine a rope tying yourself to the door. And if things get hairy... You got to break that rope. You got to get out of here. 
me- mentally and physically. So <laughs> Salen leads them in kind of, you know, is there somebody here? Is there a presence? And you hear this knock. <laughs> and Salen goes to investigate it. And she comes back and is like, sorry, that was my food delivery. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, guys, just some DoorDash. Just a little bit, bit of DoorDash. That was so funny. Because everyone's like, are you fucking kidding me? They're all freaked out, yeah. <laughs> And her house does look really creepy um, wherever she lives, Salem. Yeah. So that when she does get up and leave and the camera's just on like her like dining room, you're like, that looks like a murderer's house. Yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so they um, they continue the, the seance and Gemma quickly, quickly is like, there's something in here. And she starts sobbing and is like, I think it's this guy I knew from school, Jack. Yeah, and she says, uh, the thing, yeah, she makes up a name and then she says, oh my God, the pressure on my neck's unbearable. Uh, yeah. He mm-hmm. was really nice to me and he hung himself and everyone's like, oh my God. Like, shit. And then Salen's internet cuts out, but there's this like weird leap where it looks like something jumped her. Yeah. And we, that's never explained because she's okay, but that was fucking creepy. Very creepy. I rewound to be like, what was that? Me too. Yeah, <laughs> Br- Brown and I were like, hold on, are we supposed to see that? Because <laughs> horror does that to you, right? You're, you've got to keep up. And you have to catch, you know, little things. And host is very much like playing with the screen. And they all ask, like, Gemma, are you all right? And she looks up and she's laughing. She made it all up. She's like, I got you guys. And they're oh, all like, are man. you fucking kidding me? They're pissed. Oh, and Haley is very pissed. Yeah. She just gets on her phone immediately and is like trying to like contact Salen to see if she's okay. And Gemma is like, are you okay? Are you okay? And won't shut up. And then finally Haley's like, fuck off, Gemma. Fuck off. I told you not to disrespect them, you know? And, and as they're arguing, Haley's chair flies back <laughs> out of fucking nowhere. It was, it, you know, you, you stand up straight. It's, yeah. a, it's one of those reactions yeah, yeah. like, Next fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone's just like, oh, <laughs> calm and quiet and freaked. <laughs> and yeah, you got you got. I, I love you. Have Emma over and over saying, like, "Oh, stop taking the piss." <laughs> Good God! And yeah, and Haley, Haley's just lit, like very scary, back against the wall. But it's like the um, that really interesting spot that's always great in horror when you use an open door. Yeah, and you use the. Uh, the frame of the door. The negative like, space. Uh, so good. That's that. Uh, you, you start seeing things that aren't there. You start seeing shadows exactly, that aren't in the movie. It's, exactly. It's freaky. Good stuff. Ghost stories are always like that. Mm-hmm. So they're all freaked. And then Caroline hears something from outside her door. So she goes to investigate that. Grabs a selfie stick. Hooks up her phone to that. Puts it up in the attic. And pans around. <laughs> Jesus. You just see this pair of legs hanging and everyone's like, go back. What was that? And then it's gone. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That was a, that was a jolt. <laughs> yeah. Th- yeah. Very frightening and, and, and atmospheric, you know, to the core, to the bone where you just see these hanging legs and already in your mind, they made that, you know, Jimma made this character up who supposedly hung himself. So you're already thinking that like, Oh God, this Jack guy's real, isn't he? You know, uh, yeah. boy. And then Haley finally gets a hold of Salen, and Salen's like, I'm so sorry, my internet cut off. Where are you guys? She's like, you were saying something, Gemma, about uh, about Jack. Uh, are you guys, have y'all been talking to him? And mm. Haley's like, I don't know, Gemma, have we? <laughs> oh, man. And they confess, Gemma made her up. And Salen's like, oh, no, 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 you shouldn't have done that. You've, you've upset the spirits, you've mocked them, and you've created a false spirit. So now anything can wear that mask. Whew. That's, I'm getting chills just talking about me this. Me too, yeah. Th- th- this, is, this is why I think people need to see this movie is because those feelings, those emotions that you go through, like when you're watching a, a new and good horror film, just hasn't happened this year because of the circumstances. So please <laughs> sign up for Shudder for the free trial and check it out. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> My God. So now they're all like, what do we do? And Salem's like, well, and then she gets cut off. <laughs> They're on again, their own. Again, yeah. So now, now the other yeah, guide, who when they actually now need a guide because Gemma fucked them, uh, she's gone. So Haley tries to lead it and says, you know, visualize the circle, visualize the rope, cut yourself off. And they all do it. And it looks like everything's going to be fine. And uh, it's not. It's not fine. <laughs> to put it lightly, no. Uh, <laughs> the, sp- the spirit kills Caroline smashes her face into the into the camera and you see uh, she's got her background on zoom you can put like an automated kind of gif background and hers is just her walking out of the bathroom and putting something in a drawer so you see that on her monitor over, over. and then her face just hits the monitor and it's a brutal 
bloody just smack. And everyone's like, what is going on? And um, Redina, Redina, oh. Redina's like, did y'all see my boyfriend leave? Yeah. Oh, oh. And she, she sees his phone. Oh, man. And then he just falls from the ceiling dead. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. Oh, it, but geni- like genius stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, that that's when like Haley starts kind of seeing stuff down her hallway. Oh man, it's start, everything kind of like is like torqued up at this point, but still sticking to the format of switching through the screens. And you're like, man, like, uh, <laughs> like I wish they were all in the same place so they could help each other. Emma gets like dragged and she runs away and hides under the blankets. Gemma and Haley are screaming at each other. This is your fault. Yeah. Like they are just screaming at each other. And Haley gets dragged through a doorway. And Gemma puts on a mask and bolts outside of her apartment. And when I like when at this point I'm thinking like, oh that bitch is running. She's out of here. <laughs> She's like, good, but then, good but luck, you, assholes. Then you remember at the very beginning of the film, the <laughs> thud that Haley was hearing was Gemma throwing rocks at her window. And you're like, oh, they like are neighbors. Yeah. So she's literally going to help Haley, which yeah. is which is good for her. You finally did something right. Yeah, because this is your fault. This blood is on your hands. A hundred percent. Uh, oh, and then Teddy comes back. Teddy's like, yeah, sorry, what I miss? And he's like, well, he sees all the screen and they're all like missing. Yeah. And he's like, everyone's on, missing. Guys. And Emma is a cowering under the blankets. Teddy, She's like, Teddy, please go. Don't like, don't. And he's like, come on, guys, stop taking the piss. What's going on? What have I missed? <laughs> oh, so much. And he gets attacked by like a corpse demon thing that like just pulls him around his house. And Ginny dies. Ginny gets killed above the pool. Her neck gets broken in midair. So Teddy's now like, ah. He gets knocked unconscious and burned alive with that, with that, with his piece with him. Yeah, the music box that always creeped him out starts playing, and then he just gets lit the fuck up. And was, his, yeah, his, that's what he brought for the seance, and you know, little did he know that he was gonna die next to it. And his camera goes off. Now it's just Emma and Haley's camera, and Emma gets killed next. The demon thing throws her from her balcony onto a table. Brutal, like onto a, like a picnic table out yeah. in the backyard. You know like, how fucking hard it is to break a picnic table. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That's a yeah, like 120 pound girl just being launched at it. So Gemma on Haley's camera, Gemma breaks into her window and tries to get uh, through the door. She gets attacked by the spirit and uh, she manages to find Haley hiding under her desk. They try to escape the house using Haley's Polaroid camera to kind of light their way. And that was unnerving as fuck. You kept it waiting for it to happen. Well, that's, th- that's something uh, I think horror has just has just adopted is the the polaroid camera the noise that it's so perfect for this genre for the big screen like i i can't explain how much i love it i could make a list of my top five favorite like camera flicks and oh yeah man. And, and, and horror because it is such a nice nice touch and kind of an homage to so many classics absolutely and they as they walk out they are attacked by this thing and everyone is dead yeah, I love I love when initially Emma goes into or uh, uh, Gemma goes into the apartment and gets gets smacked in the head by that wine bottle. Shit, you were like, whoa, you know that was that was that was different because yeah, you thought maybe she was gonna get thrown up in the air or, and then just boom, <laughs> just smacked you know point blank by this guy. And, and uh, I love the stuff with the footsteps when they start, oh the, on the flower. Oh my god, you know, that stuff is is bone <laughs> chilling. Or, or when Caroline is or uh, I get mixed up with the names. Emma is reaching out at that face. You know what I'm talking about? The that filter. Was, that was crazy because they're like, stop, turn your filters off. And she's like, oh, it's not my filter. <laughs> when Emma throws the bed sheet. Oh, and it, <laughs> it goes on top. Yeah, so good. Um, and this is within 56 minutes, you know, that they're just turning out these like jump scare after jump scare after jump scare. And while at the same time not being like kind of cliche. It worked. It, worked. it really worked. It was a, it felt original. It was compelling. Everyone did a great job. It's a creepy movie, and I love creepy movies because they are not that easy to find. A lot of horror films kind of suck. Not gonna lie, there's oh, very yeah. few good ones out no, there. It's a genre that's yeah, you, you're. It can sometimes be a crapshoot. You never know what you're gonna get, and it, it is nice to have a really solid uh, horror film of of this year. Yes, uh, it feels nice to finally have seen one that I'm really really into. Yes, indeed. Here's some film guys and facts for you. I've only got two. Number one. This is based on a short film by director Rob Savage, mm-hmm. where he pranked his friends during a Zoom chat, pretending to be attacked by something in his attic. He didn't inform his friends in order to get their genuine reactions to it. The video was released online and went viral. Savage was then approached, or Savage approached Shutter about making a feature-length version, 
and the rest is history. How yep. awesome is that? Yeah, and, and tw- 12 weeks to make this whole film. 12 weeks, you know, and this is all through you know, phones and computers. That is it's, amazing. It's, it's truly remarkable what they did. Number two, although scripted, the cast was allowed to improvise. Mm-hmm. For instance, the moment when Haley sneezes and the cast reacts to it was not planned. Mm. <laughs> Makes sense, yeah. I give Host an eight. It's a creepy little film that embraces the new mid-pandemic way of life and doesn't let it interfere with a good flick. Yeah, I agree. I also give it an eight. I think it has a chance to rise for me personally to a nine or, you know, who knows, maybe even a 10, depending on what kind of cult status it gets. And uh, these kind of films can grow on me personally. And something like, uh, you know, Unfriended and, you know, even I'll say again, shout out to Blair Witch Project. Those movies grow on you as you watch them more and more and get more immersed into the atmosphere. I just really hope people find a way to, to branch out and maybe try the, you know, there's, there's a, you can do a free week trial or whatever with shutter. I really encourage it for people who love movies. It's not just, not just for horror, but this year has been tough on all of us. If you're a movie fan, and I think this is one of the better ones that's at our access. So I think it would be a shame, even if you're not a, you know, big time horror fan, I think it'd be a shame if you didn't try to see this because it is at your access. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So we'd like to close out the show by discussing some of the other 2020 films we've enjoyed this year. Oh, yes. There haven't been many, for obvious reasons, but we think these films are worth mentioning as Mm -hmm. some of the best of 2020. Yeah, you take it away. You've seen more than I have. Um, I'll talk about, obviously, the ones I have seen, and I know you got to see Tenet recently, and and so yeah, I'll let you take it away. So if we're talking horror of 2020, while technically a road thriller, I'm going to throw Unhinged into the ring here. Hell yeah. This was uh, the first like movie to really kind of reopen the theaters in early July or late July. I don't remember. Maybe it was August. Recently. <laughs> and um, it stars Russell Crowe as a psychotic who murders his family and then or his wife and is then uh, honked at in traffic. And he then demands an apology from this lady. And she's like, fuck you. And he's like, oh, fuck me. No, fuck you. <laughs> and spends the whole movie hunting her down. And it is a vicious, unapologetic movie. One of Crow's best roles in years. Hell yeah. A fun return to the movies. That was my first return to the movies, and I really had a good time. Yeah, I, I, I need to see this one. I'm super excited. It's definitely up, up our alley, and uh, I would love to do it on Filmgasm one day. Absolutely. Now you do one. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm looking at this list. I've seen eight of these uh, that you have. I'll go down them. Onward, Capone, Tesla... Uh, Tenet, Emma, Unhinged, The Gentleman, The Invisible Man, The Way Back, The Five Bloods, Birds of Prey, Bad Boys for Life, and Practical Jokers, The Movie, The King of Staten Island, The Personal History of David Copperfield, Host, and First Cow. Uh, yeah, I've seen eight of those, so a lot less than you, but, uh, The Five Bloods, man. I, <laughs> I, I don't really, I, I'm not even gonna try to be cute here. I think it's, I think it's the best one of this group that I've seen. Spike Lee, very divisive, obviously, and a, a director who has, such a distinct style. Defy Bloods is actually like one of the ones I like more of his recent filmography. And uh, with the passing of Chadwick Boseman, it just elevates it to a whole new level. Uh, awesome, awesome flick. And I, I still think Delroy Lindo has that shit in the bag for best actor. Yeah, well said. Uh, we did our um, our second episode of Oscar Sunday was on Defy Bloods yeah. and Spike Lee's career. And I'm glad we got to kind of, you know, really dig into that one. Mm-hmm. It's a great movie. Yeah, exciting. Uh, is, I want I want to hear a few thoughts on Tenet because you got to see that in the yeah. theater. Uh, okay. Obviously, it's Christopher Nolan. Yeah. So Tenet is a very big spectacle movie. I can see why. Uh, I think Warner Brothers mm-hmm. was uh, banking on this being the one that's going to put butts in seats for the first time in months. It yeah. didn't, regrettably. Yeah, it made what like twenty million that, that twelve twelve that first weekend. Yep. Yeah. It 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 broke even thanks to mostly the Chinese market. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which for me worries me because now like studios might realize they don't need America anymore, <laughs> which is a little frightening. Yep. But um, is a very complicated, confused movie, which you know we were expecting that. Christopher Nolan. Um, I th- I found it way easier to understand than Inception, if that means anything. <laughs> it has a real sound design problem. Uh. The sound effects and the music are considerably higher than the dialogue. So it's tough hearing people talk in a movie where you really need to focus on what people are saying. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I've, I've heard that a lot. I've heard that you literally can't hear what some people are saying. You can't. That's insane, right? When you look at a $200 million budget, you're like, I know. you would think. Yeah, a speedboat should not fuck up 
the dialogue of a two hundred million dollar budget. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That, that, that's you know that's Nolan, right? Like Nolan, every one of his movies, you can kind of point at this like kind of divisive, you know, aspect of his filmmaking. The way the way he does it, and the guy like wears a suit while he directs. Yes, <laughs> and casts people that like look like him, like Robert Pattinson, Leonardo DiCaprio. He's oh like, my God, your haircut's gonna be like mine, you know? And he like that's him. <laughs> that's what he does. It's like he wants to see himself. Wow, I'm totally okay with it. it I I just think it's really funny. I haven't seen Tenet. I think it's really funny that this because <laughs> there's always like one complaint with Nolan movies, right? It's always like oh, it's too confusing or this part or like this part wasn't as good or, you know, this part of the story didn't flesh out like this one. Your performances are really good, but the story doesn't make sense. And I, I, it's just funny that that is the issue is the sound. <laughs> I'd like to point out, this is now a longer episode than the movie host. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, anyway, back to Tenet. Um, <laughs> That's not hard to do. Yeah. The visual effects were incredible. That was uh-huh. not lacking. The time, the way they, they do the time inversion looks really cool. Yeah. John David Washington did a great job. Pattinson did a great job. I thought Kenneth Branagh was really miscast as a Russian arms dealer right. trying to end the world. That doesn't make much sense to me, but. I don't know why he gives, it. why does he keep getting cast as Russians? I don't know. There's so many Eastern European actors out there who could do a better job. I would have cast Mads Mikkelsen personally. Ooh, I like that. But yeah, Kenneth Branagh for whatever reason. And then he's supposed to be uh, threatening his, his his wife, Elizabeth Debicki, who's like three feet taller than him. So that didn't help with realism. She could kick him off a boat. It's not that. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I gave it an eight. I did enjoy it. Um, it's going to take a few watches to really understand this movie. But yes, I did like it. Yeah, I'll, de- I'll definitely check that one out, um, you know, when, when I can. Uh, I do, I do, I know you got to see First Cow recently, and that's a, yes. movie, that's a movie I've been dying to see, so I'll probably watch that this week. And uh, I would love to do it on the show somehow. Uh, Kelly Reichardt is truly one of the, you know, more gifted, like, American indie, you know, Canadian-American indie filmmakers, where she's able to capture just this, like, normalcy and this you know authenticity of people it's she's yeah so good at it it's oh that's so a, that's amazing in first cow the way people it's so wholesome mm-hmm. because the way people react to these cakes is like i taste home like i get it now mm-hmm. you know thank you it's yeah. it feels good yeah yeah she specializes in that yeah. yeah she did a great job with that yeah i'm excited for that one uh another one i got to watch recently was the king of staten island yeah, I, I, I've seen that one too. I, I do like that. Bill Burr is stellar. That movie was fucking hilarious. Yeah, ste- yeah, I think it's one of the funnier movies. We do need to watch Palm Springs on Hulu. Yes. I think that's a film that has like already has kind of like this cult fandom of people who are really into it. And I think we just, you know, we, we watch a lot of shit and just might have missed the boat on that. But, we have a uh, lot of homework to do well, weekly. <laughs> well, and it's, um, you know, with our shows, um, you know, Filmgasm and Oscar Sunday, obviously we're doing genre film and Oscar nominated stuff. It is it is hard to find an area for comedy. It is. <laughs> but we're working on that. We are we are we are working on that and and we do want a place for everybody. Every film we want them to have a pl- a platform. And so that's our goal with Film Guys and Productions is to, you know, create that space for everybody. We've spoken about that before. Uh, we feel like we've created a really safe space for horror movies to to live and breathe and be themselves without having to always be the shining. Yeah. And uh, for Oscar Sunday, we take a little different approach at it. We are probably a little more critical because that's what we're doing. Uh, you know, like we just did Little Miss Sunshine. We're doing Hamlet this week. That's a 60-year gap <laughs> in, uh, in, in, you know, in film. And, but they're both Oscar nominated. And that's why we're doing them. And yeah, we, I think comedy, speaking of King of Staten Island, would have been a great film for you and I to talk about. We just need to create the right space for it. Yeah, absolutely. I could see King of Staten Island honestly getting like a screenplay nod maybe. No kidding. Best, and, yeah. Sneak in Bill Burr, best supporting actor. I would love right, right right now. I mean, if we were if you and I were making him, I mean, he would be up for sure just because of the lack of stuff. Oh, he's on my Gazzy's list. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, the Gazzy's will be happening still, and whether you know, we're just gonna use what we have seen from twenty twenty. Yeah. At the end of the year, uh, hey man, it's been difficult, but it's been difficult for everybody to see stuff. Yes, of course. So we're still gonna have, I think, a good group of stuff because we're gonna, I mean, we're gonna see Trial of Chicago Seven. We're gonna see Make. Yeah, we're gonna see Devil all the time. It's gonna be mostly streaming movies, but you know we will do what we can. They look they, a lot of them look good. I am really excited for this week, uh, Devil all the time, which actually comes out today, uh, Wednesday. For, yes. Yeah. Uh, as you're listening to this, hopefully you go check that movie out too. For sure. Uh, so my all-time favorite still of this year is easily The Gentleman. 
I knew I, I knew you were going to talk about that one. That one and Onward are both real strong. Oh my god, that movie is so hilarious. It's so smart. It's all the characters are so unique. Everyone's playing off like outside their comfort zone. Yes, it's so to see Matthew McConaughey as an American expat running the weed game in, in England. Perfect. My God. Well, and, and, <laughs> and how has nobody cast him as this kind of character before? He's a great he, gangster. He's 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 a, he's great at he's great at a lot of things. But when you see what you see the tenacity in you know True Detective and even the heat check performance in Wolf of Wall Street, like this guy should play more like yeah like. Guys in that kind of underworld, kind of a sinister yeah. character. Yeah, he, he can do it, and and not you know the guy is so damn good looking, like he can pull off any uh, style, fashion. So if you put him in any era, like he's got it. He does. He does got it. Love that guy. I love <laughs> Hugh Grant as this sleazy reporter. Yeah, Colin Farrell. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Hunnam. The uh, the, the costumes. Henry man. Golding. Like everyone was so good. Golding. Golding is a fascinating guy. I wanted to ask you. Yeah. Um. Is he someone you could see taking over the Bond? Is he British? Yeah. Yes. You think he could? <laughs> yes. Right. I, I mean, I know he needs to be British, but you know, you look at you know, obviously all the guys have always been white. I think it'd be really cool to change that up. I could see that. A suave. And I, I've yeah. always thought Idris Elba would be awesome, but how many more could he actually do? He, he Golding of, is like that's a ten year run of him playing Bond. He could do four films or whatever. I yeah. think he'd be great. He's very good looking. The women love him. He's great. Crazy rich Asians. Simple favor and gentleman. I think he can do it. I'm I'm in. I could see that. Yeah. Henry Golding's awesome. He's the right age if you want him to take over kind of like the next wave of Bond yeah. films. He yourself is too old. He is, unfortunately. I love him to death. And he probably, if he did like a standalone Bond movie, it'd probably be fucking kick-ass. But I think you you want a guy who can take the mantle. Yeah. That's what they've true. always done, right? Yeah. Always, you know, I mean, you're cast the Bond, young. Yeah, you're the Bond expert. You yeah. Know, uh, but yeah. Connery became Bond when he was in his mid-30s. Mm-hmm. Moore, same deal. Lazenby, we don't really talk about Daniel Lazenby. Craig. Yeah. Dalton, Barraza, and Craig, they all came in young, and when they, you know, got hit their 50s, like, most of them left. They, More stayed, because they couldn't get rid of him. <laughs> but <laughs> most of them te- tend to check I'm out. I'm staying here, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> yeah, I could see Golding as James Bond. That's an interesting choice. Very uh, ambitious, risky choice. Uh, that's what I think they need to do. Yeah. I don't want to see another... I don't want them to make it a real comfortable kind of Daniel Craig-like After choice. Craig, I want a shake-up. Yes. I don't want it to be different. Yeah. And how much different would it be if you changed the ethnicity of yeah. the of James Bond? Asian James Bond. That would be very interesting. An Asian, an, yeah, an Asian, you know, English 007 is like, so yeah, sign me up. Yeah. But The Gentleman, fucking fantastic movie. Uh, if you want to watch it, you're going to have to buy it. It's not on any streaming. Yeah, yeah. You got to see that in theaters. I did. Oh, yeah. my God. I was laughing my ass off. I love Guy Ritchie's style so much. Oh, me too, right? <laughs> I, I've always thought that Snatch would be a great uh, film gas movie. Yes. Uh, just, a, just a wild one, right? And so different. And one of my favorite Brad Pitt performances. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, That about covers my, like, favorites of yeah, the year. Yeah, because we did Invisible Man on this show. Yes. Um, Birds of Prey, we also did, right? No, we didn't. No, no, we, we both yeah. saw that, though. That's right, that's right. It was good. It's fine. A little little forgettable at times, and, you yeah. know, I, I'm not a huge fan of the title changes and all that stuff. Oh, that stuff. really got on my nerves. But Ewan McGregor is something to behold in that movie. Oh, he's fucking terrifying. So, yeah, if, <laughs> if anything, that's worth it. But, yeah, yeah, man, I think Defy of Bloods is probably my favorite of the year, along with, uh, you know, Host and Onward. There, there's a little group, but none of them are, like, taking it away from me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say my favorite thing I've watched, and I talked to you about, I talked to you about this. It, it's going to be on Netflix. Is you know the the Chicago Bulls documentary, The Last Dance, talking about Michael Jordan and you know Scottie Pippen and all those guys in the that 1997-1998 season. And you know it's you know it's long. It's ten hours of of footage of you know these guys playing and the you know what's going on. Uh, to me, the most interesting thing was what's going on with Michael Jordan off the court. What's going on in the locker room? How does he talk? Um, and that's what everybody was really fascinated by was his tenacity on and off the court, whether it be a game of poker or a game of basketball, he was going to win. And uh, one of my favorite lines from that was uh, uh, BJ Armstrong and Will Perdue, who played with him for years during the 90s. You know, they were talking about how they'd be on planes to go to and from games and MJ would always sit in the back with like the high rollers and they'd play like big card games and Will Purdue is like me and BJ would sit up at the front and play a dollar per hand. He's like, but MJ would still, before we landed, every time he'd come up to the front of the plane and start playing with us for a dollar and be like, MJ, like, 
we're just playing for a dollar. He's like, yeah, but I still want your dollar in my pocket. Jesus. <laughs> that's, that's a sickness. <laughs> he, he, he was, I, I truly think that MJ was, was, was mentally like ill. And that's why he was so good at what he was, you know, what he was doing, why his, his craft, you know, is kind of unmatched as far as basketball players go. Uh, he put together just this, you know, almost perfect, you know, 14 year career of six championships, you know, multiple MVPs and, people are fascinated by those guys, right? When they're just dominant at their, their craft to see what they're like off. And he, he's no different. Yeah. And I, I highly encourage people to watch. I think you would love it, Connor, not because you love basketball, but because you love storytelling. And it is, it is pretty mind blowing the footage that they get of this guy just living his life and being the most dominant athlete in the world. Damn. So yeah, I, I think it's the, the best thing I've watched this year, even though it's obviously not a movie, it's a 10 hour thing. I, I do think it's like a must see television event uh for people who just love entertainment if we're talking like non-traditional stuff Mm -hmm. i was very impressed with the revival of unsolved mysteries yes yes (laughs) (laughs) i had never seen unsolved mysteries prior to this new run and i swept through it because i was fascinated Mm -hmm. these are incredible true stories of disappearances and murders and alien abduction possible possibilities Mm -hmm. and just the way these are told you get sucked into it and you want justice, but very rarely is justice ever done. But I'm hoping, you know, because after watching this, I went through the old catalog and I started watching some of the old ones. Yeah. And there are a lot of updates of people finding these people and people actually getting arrested for these crimes. Yes, because of these documentaries. Yeah. yeah. So I'm hoping this new one, you know, starts a trend and people start remembering these things and people actually go to pr- prison for these crimes. I know that one episode, they've already exhumed the body for, due to new evidence. That's incredible. So yeah, fantastic. Check that out on Netflix. Yeah, great stuff. We, we, we would love to do, you know, obviously TV is something that we watched. <laughs> you know, we're not, we're not from the stone ages, you know, we just don't, we just don't bring it up a bunch on, on the podcast. Cause it kind of opens up this whole world. Right. And yeah, but I do think it would be really cool for us to do an episode on, on solved mysteries or do some sort of project where we could kind of talk about true crime stuff mm-hmm. because it's very, you know, it's got a lot of horror elements to it. And that that's true. That, that when you see true story and like that, you know, murder and horror and crime all involved, it just gives you the chills. That haunting music. You yeah, you can't it's, get away from it. It's the best. You know, like my favorite would be, you know, Paradise Lost, that three-part documentary from HBO is like so dark and so demoralizing. But but I like but I like love watching it. It's really entertaining. I feel the same way about Unsolved Mysteries. Fantastic. Yeah, man. Um so yeah, it's the five bloods for you, it's the gentleman for me. Yeah, as of right now, yeah. 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 But we, you know, the year's not over. There's still some stuff. We're not going to get a lot of it, but we will get yeah, some I'm, stuff. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty big uh, David Fincher fan, so I'm thinking Manx going to take that. <laughs> but, you know, we'll see until I see it. I'm a pretty big Aaron Sorkin fan, so I'm looking forward to the trial we're, of the Chicago I think 7. I think we're both going to dig that a lot, and I think we're going to dig um, Devil All the Time a lot. Oh, yes. Very much. Awesome. So, um, next week, we're doing another sequel, our first mm-hmm. threequel, if you will. A weary police lieutenant investigates a series of murders that may be tied to a mysterious event in Georgetown that the cop investigated years earlier. When a priest involved in that event awakens from his catatonic state, strange and bizarre incidences begin to occur once again in William Peter Blatty's The Exorcist (laughs) 3. An argument can be made that this one is the creepiest of the entire franchise. Yeah. And we will certainly figure out why. In the meantime, if you're going to host a Zoom call with your friends... Don't do a seance, but if you do a seance, don't piss off the spirits of the dead. The last thing we need during this insane year is the dead rising from the grave. See you next Wednesday. Mm